Welcome to What's Going On, the weekly podcast and videocast of First United Methodist Church in Yankton, South Dakota. Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of What's Going On. I'm Pastor Katie here, First United Methodist in Yankton, South Dakota, and I'm glad you could join me for this episode. In this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about what's going on in the life of the church, uh, just some upcoming events, things that are happening, and then also uh, I have a bit of a reflection that I want to share. So um, I want to kind of just talk about a little bit of the things that are happening uh, in the life of the church first. And so... um, this uh, coming Monday uh, will be the Arla Watchhorn funeral, and that'll be at two o'clock at the Costa Funeral Home. They will be having a visitation at the funeral home Sunday from 5 to 7 p.m. with a prayer service at 7 p.m. Again, that is for Arlo Watchhorn. Uh, and so if you knew him, knew the family, uh, we encourage you to to attend that and be, be present with them in that. Uh, next week, we also have a men's night out happening, and that will be Thursday night at 6.30. And that um, is the same location that they've been for a while. But if you are interested in going and you haven't gone before, uh, Dave Corneman is a great person to get in touch with, or you can call the office and we can give you uh, information on it. Uh, We also, this coming Sunday, um, is the opportunities to meet with the new bishop, Bishop Lynette Planbeck, up in Sioux Falls. Uh, There's opportunities if you would like to worship in Sioux Falls. She'll be at worship at First United Methodist. Um, But then in the afternoon, she will be at Sunnycrest United Methodist, which is right on 41st Street there. Um, for a time of meet and greet and and um, answering some questions and things like that. And so um, I encourage you, if you have the ability and the opportunity to go and to meet with her, uh, she's been very um, impressive to me so far. I'm very grateful to have her uh, be committed to our conference and the work that we are doing right now. Um, And then just a side note, to be in prayers for our bishop and the cabinet, our district superintendents, uh, they are all, uh, their plates are full with a lot of things happening right now. It's a point of season. We're also dealing with, um, the conference is dealing with churches uh, in the midst of discernment processes around disaffiliation. There's just a lot happening. And so um, I'm going to call on you as my prayer warriors to be praying for and loving and supporting all of our district superintendents and our bishop. Um, We also, this is our camp month. And you heard a couple episodes ago, Tiffany talk a bit about our children and youth and about camping. Um, And so we want to get everyone signed up for camp uh, prior to the early bird deadline, which is next month. Um, I cannot overstate how incredible camp is and the role that camp has played in my own faith life, my own faith journey, my calling into ministry. Um, Camp has become very much a second home for me. Uh, It is a place where I see and encounter God pretty consistently because I know that God will show up and at camp it's easier for me to pay attention. And so um, if you have children, grandchildren, um, but there's also even adult camps, uh, I encourage you to check out the camping brochure and get signed up. If you are not able to attend camp, but you would like to support the camping ministry, maybe consider uh, helping support the camp scholarships or let me know and maybe um, if we have a child or children who'd like to go to camp but can't quite afford it, maybe you can be help make that blessing happen uh, through your gifts. So let me know if that's something you might be interested in participating in. This coming Sunday is also our United Methodist Committee on Relief, our UMCOR Giving Sunday. Um, and I just want to talk really briefly about what that is, if you're unaware. UMCOR is our Committee on Relief. It is basically our disaster response, our first aid uh, kind of um side of our church. One of the many benefits of being in a connectional system and that all of our churches are connected together is that it is very easy for us to join together and and have ministries um, like UMCOR where we uh, can respond quickly and respond 
meaningfully to natural disasters. Because we are so connected, we have United Methodist churches all around the world. We often already have people in whatever place is being affected. Uh, we already have infrastructure in place to get needs where they need uh, to get things where they need to be to get funds where they need to be. Um, we're often one of the first organizations to respond and we're often one of the last organizations uh, to leave in the aftermath that we are often able to stay much longer um, in the rebuilding uh, process. <clears throat> The other thing that I love about UMCOR is that when there is a specific need, a specific ask, 100% of what you donate goes directly to that cause. Um, if you donate through something like Red Cross, um, I don't know if you know this, but a small percentage of that goes to cover Red Cross administrative costs because it does take people, it does take resources in order to coordinate everything, in order to make all of that possible. Um, in the way that that uh, UMCOR works is that we as the church take an offering to cover the administrative cost so that whenever someone chooses to give through UMCOR to a specific cause or purpose, 100% of their giving goes directly to that. There is a 0% taken out for administrative costs because we cover that as the church. And that is what we are giving to on Sunday. We are covering the administrative cost um, so that every time anybody gives to um, a specific need, they know that everything that they're giving is going directly to that need. And so <clears throat> I encourage you to give um, to that. Also, you'll notice in church, uh, we have now some things in the pews that have QR codes on them to take you directly to our church website and where you can give online or using your smartphone to take you to the Vanco app uh, if you'd like to to get that app and be able to manage your giving that way. We we realize that we've been telling you about it, but we haven't like given you that direct information and we wanted to make that a little bit easier because I know that sometimes when I walk out of a building, I have intentions to do things, but I immediately forget. It's like walking through a doorway and you're like, why did I come into this room? Um, and, and I don't know why that phenomenon is real, but it is. So um, this is our way of just trying to make things a little bit easier. And so you'll notice that uh, in the pews uh, in worship if, uh, this coming Sunday. Um, we have Easter coming up sooner than than um, I'm ready for, <laughs> uh, but I love it. Uh, so Holy Week, just to kind of give you a heads up, uh, we'll have Palm Sunday. That's going to be a big Sunday here where we do our family activities, um, and that'll be April 2nd. There will be no Wednesday night worship during Holy Week because we invite you instead to come Thursday and Friday night for worship. Thursday night is our Monday Thursday service. That'll be at 7 p.m., and Friday is our Good Friday service, and that will also be at 7 p.m. here in the church. And then Easter, uh, we will have worship at 10 a.m. Uh, Easter Sunday. And so we invite you to get that on your calendar and make plans for that. Um, knock on wood, hopefully the weather uh, cooperates for all of that. I have had in the past uh, snow on Easter, and it was not fun. <laughs> so <coughs> with that, I had a reflection this week that I wanted to share, um, partially because I thought it was interesting that the timing of it was very similar, but also I felt it was very appropriate. Um, as many of you know, before I, I came to Yankton, um, I had begun kind of a health journey with, and, and my husband and I had started attending the gym and being really m conscious and mindful about what we were eating. And, um, and that was in 2019, right after the birth of my son, Ethan, uh, quite literally, like we started like the day that I was cleared to start working out after my after my C-section. So uh, quite literally, he was six weeks old, I think, when we started. Um, and over the course of that time, I lost about 60 pounds um, and gained some muscle and, and all of those things. Uh, but then the pandemic hit. And as you know, uh, life kind of got turned upside down and we ended up moving here, which has been a blessing. But one of the things that it did mean is that we uh, lost our gym community that we had been a part of. Um, and then over the course of, of uh, dealing with the pandemic and um, 
getting pregnant again and having Abigail, uh, who is just such a joy and we love her. But over the course of that time, um, uh, I found a lot of the weight that I had lost. <laughs> it, it found its way back to me. Um, and so th in January, I, I recommitted myself to, to uh, putting my health uh, as a higher priority in my life than I had been and, and really going down that road again and that journey of um, building up my strength and focusing on eating what is right for my body, um, feeling myself, that kind of thing. But what's been interesting in this process um, is I'm always reminded of where I was. Uh, or earlier this year, um, some of you saw on Facebook a post that um, had been shared where I had a, a I, I attained a goal that I had, which was to deadlift over 200 pounds again. And, and it really was um, a good moment for me. It, it, I felt very proud um, that it was this hev heavier than I had lifted in a couple years. Um, but there was that little voice in the back of my head that was like, this still isn't where you were. In 2019, I was deadlifting 230 pounds, um, and and I'm not there. And and so there's part of me that truly celebrated that victory, and then part of me that couldn't help but compare to where I once was. Um, also, you know, it's the same on the uh, you know body transformation side of things of. Um, things are changing for the better, and that's good, but it's hard for me to know that even though I'm making progress, again, I was, I'm was i not where I was, and that's really hard. And I, I share this because I can't help but see parallels to the church. And what's interesting, and what I found interesting as I thought more about it, was the timing of it is almost exactly the same. Um, and that um, early on in my time here and in COVID, the lament was, you know, this is the way it looked in 2019, pre-COVID. This was the way our church functioned. This is how many people were here. This is, we had all of this happening and everything was great. Maybe not perfect, but it was great. And then, and then the pandemic hit and it, threw us all off and you know now we look around and we're not where we want to be and and then i also look in the last year i have seen so much being built in our church so much true community happening so small groups that are forming that are real and authentic and people are being and and people are being healed not healed of like, you know, oh, you have a broken leg, we're going to heal you. But like, I think beginning to feel healing of hurt and pain and doubt and um, finding a home again. Um, and, and I know like, and there's real victory. And for me, maybe it's easier for me to see the growth and to see the progress and to see um, the strength that we are gaining because I wasn't here in 2019 to experience what it was before. Um, I, I, I came when we were worshiping in the parking lot. And so uh, from my vantage point, we keep growing as a church and we keep, we keep finding people and we keep finding things that we're passionate about and accomplishing things. And it's, and it's great. But I recognize that for many of you, you're stuck in the same pattern that, I, that I've been stuck in with my health journey and that you, as happy as you are for the things that are happening, you can't help but compare it to some previous time where things were closer to the way you wanted them to be. And I just, it's a dangerous thing because comparison is the thief of joy. And oftentimes we think about that as comparing with other churches or other people, but sometimes it's comparing with um, maybe the way we used to be. How many of you look back on your life and remember 
and maybe this is more of a, a woman thing. Maybe men have it too. I guess I don't really know. Um, you know, like in your 20s and in your 20s, you thought, oh, if only, if only I lost 10 pounds or if only I was more muscular, if only, you know, in your 20s, you think, uh, I'm just so flawed in this way. And then in your 40s, you look back at who you were in your 20s and you're like, if only I could, everything was great then. If only I could have the body I had then. If only I could have the life I had then. Like, things were so much easier. Um, uh, and we can just never truly be satisfied or happy uh, when we live like that. Um, 2019, Katie, was not perfect. Um and there is, the reality is, is I will never, I will never be that person again. Since 2019, I've had things happen in my life that have changed me. I have things happened in my life that have forever changed my body. Um, you know, I, I now no longer have a gallbladder <laughs> that forever has changed my body. I had another child that has forever changed my body, no matter how much I work, I will never go back to exactly that. But the truth is also that um, I could exceed that. Just thinking about my health journey, you know, I wasn't where I needed to be then. Was I closer? Yes. But if I commit to doing the work now and I stick with it and I'm able to be here to do that work, I could exceed where I was then with who I am now. And I think who I am now is more equipped to do that than who I was then because I have been through some things. I am more resilient. I am more clear about who I am and the strength that I have. And what's true of me is true of the church as well. We will never be the church of 2019 again. And there can be real grief around that. And I want to hold space for that, but I want you to hear it. There is no going backwards. There is only moving forward. And I recognize that right now it feels like maybe we haven't gotten back to that place yet. But I also don't want you to miss out on all the growth that is happening. And healthy growth and strength and depth that is happening in our church right now. The clarity of vision and mission that is happening right now. There are really good things. We are headed down a road where we can be the church that God has called us to be and we can exceed where we have been. If we, if we are willing to come together and be the church and do the work and really build this community in authentic ways and really allow ourselves to be vulnerable and to share in each other's lives and to commit to the work that we share together, there is no limit to what we can accomplish through Christ. Now here, in, in sharing all of this with you, I'm going to share and be vulnerable in one more thing. You can use me as the object lesson here. I'm going to keep commit to staying on this health journey because I know it is the best thing for my body. But it's a lot of work. And I would love, love for that work to happen a lot. The change that it, that is required to happen a lot quicker than it does. But it will happen. I will get there because I'm willing to do the work. And I'm telling you, and you get to hold me accountable in please nice ways, that would be great, thank you. But as, as you see me shift and change, be reminded that the church is doing the same, that it is growing ever closer to its goals. And use that to recommit yourself to the work that we have to do together. It is hard work. We are in a hard season right now, but it is only a season. And I see so much of God's spirit moving in each one of you. And I know, I know that who we will be will, 
will be great and who we are is great. But what God can accomplish through us now is even greater because what we have gone through has shown our strength and shown our resilience and maybe ways that we didn't even realize we had shown our identity and our purpose in ways that maybe we weren't clear about before. God is with us always. And so take courage, my friends, good things are happening and good things are on the horizon for all of us. Until next time, God bless. Thank you for joining us for this episode of What's Going On, a podcast of First United Methodist Church in Yankton, South Dakota. We'd love to have you join us for worship on Wednesday nights at 6.15 or Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. You can also worship with us online at firstumcyankton.org or find us on YouTube.